So I'm just getting set up as the sun's coming up over the horizon, over these grasslands in beautiful South Africa, getting my camera gear together and getting ready to head out into the grasslands and see what I can find for you guys today. Black wildebeest are actually pretty tricky to photograph, not least because of their colour, but also because they're standoffish and like to keep a distance. But more than that, there aren't that many in the national parks of South Africa. And this is because their home range, the high felt grasslands of the central plateau, has mostly been turned over to farming. And now the bulk of their population is found on game farms and ranches that are unavailable to photographers. I love to photograph them in the late summer grasses and flowers of Reetvay Nature Reserve near Pretoria. And what I particularly like about this species is their marked forward sloped horns, beautiful facial fur and markings, but most importantly, their wonderful blonde manes and tails which they flick in that ceremonial pirouetting dance that they do in the mating season. I think we all have those species that we'd love to get a better picture of. But for me, one of those is the most common, the almost ubiquitous helmeted guinea fowl. I love these birds with their spotted feathers and highlighted red and blue heads strutting through the grasslands of Southern Africa. And I think a lot of that has to do with memories of my first visit here as a six year old all those years ago. They have a wonderful haunting call made in the evenings and the early mornings. And sometimes if you're lucky and you make that whistle, they'll even come running to see what's up. Photographing smaller animals near the ground is always troublesome from a vehicle and that's because of the raised perspective that we have. One way to get around it is actually to back off, to increase the distance and try and use a longer lens or a longer focal length. This has the effect of reducing that perspective and making the background appear further away. I got an email the other day from a guy called Ben who lives in Illinois in the US and he's been shooting wildlife for over 20 years. And he asked me what I do about the sheer quantity and volume of photographs that we wildlife photographers tend to take, you know, excitement and uh, high shutter speed cameras adds to our shot counts, sometimes immeasurably so. And I think I've got a few ideas that I use in my own photography that I can share on that subject. And the first is a field technique. So what I do when I come to a place like this is I examine the situation and think about the photographs that I've already got in my portfolio or in my back catalogue. If I pull up next to a zebra or a lion or something like that, do I really want this photograph? Is it actually going to materially add anything to my portfolio? And if I just play that thought back in my head, sometimes it helps me slow down a little bit on the shutter button. Now obviously I don't want to miss a great shot or a great opportunity. So it's easier done with some subjects than others. If it's a lion just laying there, well then it's a very easy choice. But if it's a bird in flight, you don't know if it's going to be better or worse than your back catalog. So then you have to probably take the shot. So in some respects, this method limits the amount of photographs that you return home with. And I think that's a valuable way of doing things. Then when you get back home, I like to flip the workflow a little bit on its head. Instead of importing absolutely everything into our photo management cataloging software, I don't do it. Instead, I only pick the 
best, the very best shots out of any sequence. Perhaps one or maybe two shots out of any sequence. And I import those. And that means I don't just import the bulk of the images to Lightroom or your other photo management software and then have to go through all of them, hundreds of photos, and pressing the reject key to get rid of the ones I don't want. Instead, I've chosen a much fewer number of the ones that I do want. And I just delete the rest. I let them go. I don't need them. I've got the ones that I do need. And I think this combination of practices really limits the number of shots that I bring back. So for a humdrum kind of day like today, where I don't really think I've got anything particularly special, I'll probably only keep a couple of shots to show you guys as examples in this video. The rest of them are going into my delete bin. I'm not keeping them. I don't want them. They're not good enough. And the second knock-on effect of this whole workflow, if I can call it that, is it means that it really helps improve the quality, the overall quality of the shots in your portfolio. You only keep the best, you don't worry about the rest. By 10 in the morning, the light has become extremely harsh, too harsh really to photograph much. And I've been having a bit of a sleep for a while, just to recharge the batteries after my early start this morning. But one of the things that you can do to, uh, to maximize your shooting time in these conditions, you know, because you drive out quite a long way to come to a place like this and then you have a couple of hours at dawn and maybe a couple of hours at, at, at dusk to photograph. But one of the, the ways that I've found that's quite reasonable to extend those hours is actually just to look for areas of shade to photograph in. Now there's not that many areas of shade in the grasslands, uh, but here there's a willow tree next to me and it's shading quite a nice and interesting uh, sort of wet marshy habitat and a lot of the birds are coming down into this area to feed on the seeds in here and the insects in here and probably some to nest as well and because the area is under the shade of this willow tree it allows me to photograph these birds in diffuse light without any harsh shadows on them and that helps, that really does help in these kind of bright, bright, bright conditions to eke out the shots in the longer part of the day while we're waiting and waiting and waiting for the light to start to improve in the afternoon. And so often in these kind of habitats and areas, it's the smaller things that we find to photograph. So I often find these little birds, insects, and also uh, little rodents are quite quite interesting things to photograph and if you wait long enough they'll stop worrying about you and start to come out after a while 20 13 40 minutes or so so I'm not saying it's the greatest thing to do in the world but it does help to just eke out the time you've got in the field and just make it pay for itself a little more rather than just giving up in the hot, long stretches of the day. Time has been so hard on us, my friend. photographing a long-tailed widow bird. They're these fantastic birds that grow meter-long tails in the summertime to attract mates. And they've got a very wonderful behavior. They sit on perches 
in the grasslands here and sing. And then every so often, they launch themselves up into the sky and do this amazing uh, display flight to attract females. And they circle around and land on a second perch. And they do this every five or 10 minutes. So if you can find one that's confiding and that'll let you sit with it, that isn't too distant, you can generally try to get some shots of it flying in the air. And I happen to be doing this now at sunset, the sun's setting over my shoulder there. There's this glorious orangey glow that's hitting this bird. And it's a black bird, so it's difficult to expose. So this backlit, sorry, frontlit condition, those black feathers illuminated by the sunlight is really making, I hope, for some spectacular shots. And I haven't been let down by this amazing Canon R5 either, with its 20 frames per second electronic shutter. I'm managing to focus on this bird as it's pirouetting in the sky and firing off a good bunch of shots. At the moment, I'm shooting one two thousandth of a second at f5. So the focal length I've got is a 560 f4. And uh, I'm just shooting at f5 to sharpen it up a bit. And I'm just underexposing slightly because the background is very dark and the camera's going to seek to to uh, bring the exposure up. And the bird's got sections of white in its wing. And I don't want to blow that in the sunlight. And the sun's doing a really good job of illuminating the black feathers as well. So I think I'm getting decent shots. And one of the great advantages of an electronic uh, viewfinder like this is I can actually judge the exposure as I'm looking through it and not have to guess and look at the LCD later. Uh, the only downside with using the electronic viewfinder at the moment is that it is chewing the battery. I've used uh, probably one quarter of the double battery pack just in this session photographing this bird. And keeping the viewfinder active, I can actually feel the heat of the camera through my right hand. And I'm down to zero shots with that last flight. What a wonderful afternoon. That camera is hot. It's not supposed to overheat in stills mode, and it hasn't. But it's certainly going to keep you toasty and warm on a cold winter's day. On safari, that's for sure. No need for pocket hand warmers when you've got the Canon R5 to do the job for you. It's amazing how the afternoon generally delivers in summer. I think it's probably better than the morning. The light's sweet in the morning, but it's over so quickly. The afternoon just builds and builds as the clouds come over at about three in the afternoon and the light starts to, to, to diffuse through them. You get this soft glow or this changing landscape with sunlight and shadow, which makes for very attractive pictures. But more than that, I think the cooling of the atmosphere just brings the animals out of hiding. And I had some wonderful sightings of baby ostrich and also some behavior that I've never had before, mating zebra. I saw them off in the distance circling each other and initially I thought they were fighting so I rushed over there and luckily for me I had the door mount and the camera mounted on it and I was able to just fire off some shots as I was driving towards them with one finger. And I think perhaps I might even have got some video to show you guys. So all in all it's been a great day at Replay. I'm going to head home now and download these pictures, see what I've got and show you in the next video.